Welcome, welcome back to our first Soulful Afro show on a Wednesday. Starting off with a celebration to my home, my my light, my soul beat, uh, Panama, which celebrates uh, yesterday was our separation from Colombia. Today is our Simbolos Patrios, uh, our flag, our our hymn, and tomorrow the best of the best is the day of my home province of Colón. And this song, Patria, uh, by Ruben Blades is like, almost like an anthem, not only to us, but to all of Latin America, because he's saying that country are such beautiful things. Something, you know, one of the, my favorite uh, verses is he says, you know, it's like that old tree um, that speaks to us and moves us. It's like the, the, the love and the care that we hold deep within us um, even after the death of a grandmother and that pat patria, which is like country, home, are so many beautiful things. And today, um, what a perfect day to uh, celebrate the song and, and, and not only around the topic, but around the guests. And I want to start with this quote that I put on the Soulful Afro with Yvette page on the Soulful Afro Facebook page. It says, reflection of self. We are all mirrors for each other. People you feel drawn to reflect your inner self back at you. And you act as a mirror for them as well. And uh, Madison Taylor. And this speaks to me to both our topic and to the guest. The Spring Valley High School incident touched me on so many levels as a black woman. And, uh, and a young black woman and young black girl in me that my school was outside of my home, one of my safest spaces. And the fact that this happened in the school um, said a lot to me and, and that folks were actually justifying this police officer's behavior by comparing his behavior to this young woman's behavior. And there was this article by uh, Pamela Lewis that I wanna read that really stood out for me. Um, and, 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 you know, she says that it's a teaching moment because what happened, and she writes, what happened on October 26 resulted from a broken policy, one that seems highly subjective and therefore dangerously open to interpretation. Even if officers who take over for teachers, counselors, and administrators are not motivated by racial bias, vague laws, and policies can often break some conscious bias to the surface when applied against minority groups. Hmm. And to me, his behavior speaks to how he sees young black girls or young black boys or black people. Because the way he manhandled her is almost like he was manhandling an manhandling animal. And we are sadly always seen not in our human light, but as these objects of, of hate, of bias, and of, of animalistic tendencies because he literally was swinging this this child around you know i work with young people and god forbid yes they push your buttons and i have nieces and nephews and they push your buttons but at no point do you feel it's okay to land your hand on them in the way that he did um this child now is walking around with a broken arm uh, a messed up neck messed up back and a messed up psyche because this will forever scar her. Mm -hmm. So even if students are disrespectful, and what's interesting is that the laws in South Carolina, these the, the young woman of the incident and the young woman who uh, videotaped her um, are both being charged, which then brings up you know the whole in-school arrest of young people, particularly for non-violent offenses. You know, even if she yelled at him, she cursed at him or whatever, what part of you need to manhandle her like if she's some dog is okay? You know, and that speaks to the school to prison pipeline, um, which is fueled in, you know, this other article by Nakisha Lewis, she says it's the prison, the school to prison pipeline is fueled in large part by racial bias. 
For girls, there is also a gender bias at play. It is the compounding of racial and gender biases that makes girls of color particularly vulnerable. As a result, Black, Latina, and Indigenous American girls are disciplined at disproportionately high rates than their white counterparts. For example, the United States Department of Education reports that Black girls are suspended, listen to this, Hassan, and listen to this, my audience, six times more than white girls. Six times! And she goes on to write, which I absolutely agree, what is even more harmful is that the offenses for which girls of color are disciplined and criminalized are extremely subjective. In the case of Spring Valley, both girls were arrested for disturbing school, similar to willful defiance in other school districts. Such discipline codes allow for young people to be arrested on a case-to-case -case basis for behaviors that have complex underlining causes. And sadly, you know, it came out that she, you know, had lost family recently, which means there's some psychological and, and, and mental health things there. But that, that still doesn't excuse what happened. But it speaks to the complexity of these young girls and what is happening. Um, so it's been very disappointing, um, actually, to see folks justify this officer's behavior um, to the point that I even, I have uh, a family member and I'm putting him out there, we'll put his name out there, but I'll put him out there, who was sort of posting sort of part of the incident and what she did and how police officers or officers are seen. And my whole thing is, that still doesn't justify no, no, what he did. Not to a young girl like that or anybody, but especially a, a young female, that's just not acceptable. And the thing is, Asantu, is that you know that this wasn't the first time. Right. Because if he could go that far and supposedly it's come out that there were other adults in that room and no other adult felt the need to stop it, mm. says that this is not the yeah. first time. And it's come out that he has been, you know, charged with other acts like this and biases. So why do we have people like that working in the schools with our kids? So this is bringing up a lot of, of, of conversation because it still goes in line with Black Lives Matter. Hmm. Black Lives Matter, Black Girls Lives Matter. You know, just to touch on it, real somebody, somebody that listens to your show, um, I work with, listens to your mm -hmm. show, she was just telling me that the individuals that she, that used to make fun of her mm -hmm. when she was talking about Roxbury, mm -hmm. those are some individuals that are now cops and firefighters. So if you used to call me names and tell me to go back to where I came from, and now you're a police officer, you still have the same mindset, the same attitude. You don't want me here, so you're going to treat me like that. Mm -hmm. As an adult mm -hmm. in that police officer uniform, mm -hmm. in the in the implicit bias work that I've done nationally and in the conferences where we've attended and had this conversation, we actually have had for the past few years a police officer mm -hmm. that spoke. The police officers are trained with a level of bias towards Black and Latino men and and people mm -hmm. because they do see them as threats. And there's been studies. There's a study out of Harvard around the implicit bias you know, subconscious and conscious bias that speaks to the image. When people see black man, big, small, whatever, they see that as a threat. Hmm. And, and, and now this, in, this visual is also uh, being transferred into young girls. Because this also speaks to the pool incident over the summer right. where that officer was putting his knee yeah, down and, 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 and manhandling these girls. Right. Um, and at no point, where is it that you are a man, 300, 200 plus pounds, right. handling a woman in such a way? Right. And that folks out there actually did right. not feel bothered and offended. I, I do love Jill Scott. And if you haven't read what she said, uh, please visit the Soulful Afro with you. That Facebook page because I posted. You know, she was a teacher and she speaks. She was like, yeah, they're rude. But that does not justify put, putting your hand on them. And and share, you know, share came out straight out on Twitter like, 
swearing, like, I don't give up what she did. It was not okay. So, folks, you know, take the lenses off. You know, stand. You can never stand in the shoe of this girl or, or in my shoe as a black woman and what we have to see and what we have to deal with. But at least be able to at least hear the truth. Hear some truth. Because it was di it's disappointing that we are not outraged that this child was treated that way. Outraged. Um, so, you know, that speaks to, you know, the mirroring. That could have been any young girl I know. Mm -hmm. And Sandra Bland could have been me. Mm -hmm. Because I am the one that's going to ask you questions when I feel that you are being unjust. So... We are not so removed from some of these incidents. Um, and we give blessings that, you know, we haven't ended up in any of them. But the whole bias thing also speaks to one of the, I'm going to jump into the latest headlines because, you know, we have our guests coming up in a few, is jury selection. I don't know if you've seen that there's been all this work that's come out, the Supreme, it's going to the Supreme Court around the level of biases um, that has been um, in the jury selection, that mm -hmm. how there's a great article, and you can once again look at the Soulful Afro page, how America tolerates racism in jury selection. And there was also another article that said to examine racial bias in jury selection cases, that there's actually a case where, um, you know, they did not want black jury. You know, they didn't want folks that, you know, represented or they saw that we had a bias, so they wouldn't, they don't pick us, even if we want to be picked. So that speaks to the ongoing bias in our daily, daily community. So we're going to take a break. I think I said a lot. <laughs> as I always do. That's why, you know, it's called the Soulful Afro with Yvette Show because we bring you the latest soulful happenings in the community. Mm -hmm. And the soulful happenings are stuff that hits you at your core, mm -hmm. hits you at that intuition, that bottom mm -hmm. that you can't shake. And these are some of the things that I just cannot shake. And if it's about bringing light to them, then we are going to bring it, bring light to them on this show. So we're going to take a break. And we'll be right back with my special guest, Acelia Howell Parker, childhood friend from Rainbow City, Colon, Panama. <laughs> I'm not 